what's up y'all welcome back to the channel got a quick one for you uh it's gonna show you how to to, to one one way to test your intercoolers and talk about another way to do it but uh i was out trying to do uh some uh draggy runs last week and what would have been my best run right at the top of uh i started getting a little breakup so my best run so far was quarter mile was uh i think uh 10.91 at uh what was it a 10.91 i think at 100 miles and like 100.2 miles an hour or something like that so i'm out you know doing some runs the other night and i was able to you know it was a little bit cooler too than, than it usually had been and uh i was able to get my uh get my launch pretty good so man i was out there running and I do a run and it just it just took off good. Everything was just good. My my intake temps were lower. So I'm doing the run and you know, the dragon will tell you quarter mile, you can kind of hear it, but I kind of know where it's at now. You know, I put some little markers on the street. Well, I, well, I know where the markers are at on the streets that I do them whatever. So uh in Mexico, of course. But uh I was doing the run and right at the top before the quarter mile, it starts breaking up. So I'm like, oh, damn. So I do it like uh, two or three more times to confirm because, you know, you pull over, you know, I pull over. You can feel the car idling bad, you know, rough idle, turn it off, start it back up, you know, classic. The car runs perfect. EPC lights off, no engine lights or nothing. So. Did it again, same thing happened, EPC light comes on, you know, but it, it always happened when I'm at the, uh, in high RPM, at the top of a run. So, happened like three times, I said forget it, went home, you know, scan, I had cylinder misfire in, uh, I had cylinder misfire in one, three, and six. So I'm like, oh, man, what's going on? So I noticed that sometimes I was losing coolant. My coolant was getting low. And I'm divorced now. So I'm on divorce, uh, the Merc Racing divorce system. So I know I was getting, so I said, oh, well, maybe my intercoolers went. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and take them out. Because uh, I, I was doing the, uh, I wanted to do the, uh, the GPS uh, thermostat housing. You can see in there. I just did plus the uh, plus the uh, Mishimoto uh, low temp thermostat, so I had all that out anyway that I was gonna be doing. So I was like, go ahead and do it. But of course, this pipe broke right on the little nipple piece that's coming out of here that it broke off. Cause these you know these old pipes get brittle. Luckily, my parts guy had this one for pretty low price, brand new. So anyway, got all that, got it together. So I was like, oh, how am I going to test the intercoolers? And one way is you can uh, cap off. You could put it like this, cap this off, and then maybe put these in water and blow air through it. But I would have had to, I, I can't find my air gun or nothing. So I would have, I would have had to go buy a lot of stuff to do it. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and hook it back up. <laughs> just like this to test it so what i'm doing is since i have the pwm pull and i got the cwa 150 so it's putting out pretty good amount of pressure through the intercooler so i just uh can uh activate it you know unlock the key or whatever and it'll activate you can hear it activate there and then you could just pinch this return line the other ones the feed and you can hear it pressurize so i'm doing this i'm not really seeing anything so i'm checking around and i'm feeling this one i can feel there there's pretty good pressure going through there but anyway i did all that checked and i i noticed that this one driver side one had a little drop forming right at the edge right here but it's just a drop it's not like it's spewing out 
cooling or nothing. So, and then when I said, when I took the, you know, like I said, when I took these out, I didn't see any evidence that they were leaking like water spots on the, uh, in here or anything like that. But then I'm running just straight water and a little bit of, a uh, little bit of this can use water wetter, but, uh, they didn't have any. So I just kind of use that. But anyway, uh, I took these out and they were like real clean because I, I bought these brand new from FCP, put them in the, in the ported charger and, uh, took them out. I thought they were going to be dirty, but they were like, like brand new. And uh, I'm running the stock, uh, the stock, uh, uh, PCV. So I think somebody, whoever had a car before me had, had changed it or something. So hopefully I don't have no wood to knock on It's Everything stays good with it. So, uh, but anyway, that's the test. Another way, like I said, uh, you could put these, put these in water with the same setup and try to blow some, get a, uh, one of the, uh, heater holes clamps, heater holes grommet, put it on there cap that in off and then put some air through through one side and put it under water i would say probably no more than five or ten psi and look for bubbles to come out so anyway i took the uh stock intercoolers out of the old charger and i think i soaked them in gas but anyway got some uh spray some deep some spray and i started spraying them and it was coming clean but not really coming clean a lot so i had some awesome i said let me try this and man this awesome man is look at that stuff is just falling through And look how clean it got them, like brand new. Whereas with this stuff, I mean, it was still looking real pretty dirty. These things were uh, a lot dirtier than that right there. So, just want to share that to uh, probably the easy way to clean these all is get get some awesome from like your. Uh, local 99 cent store i know some people use a simple green soak them in simple green but uh i think at the time i was trying to do this nobody was open so i just went and got some gas soaked them in gas you know went and got the carb spray well some of this degreaser spray spraying them and wasn't really started coming off a little bit but not even close to what awesome was doing but anyway, y'all, just want to share that, and uh, you guys wish me luck. I'm gonna get all this back together. I think uh, I don't think I was thinking maybe coil packs, but I, it's very highly unlikely that three coil packs would go bad at the same time. And like I said, I can still drive the car around; it'll drive normal. It's just when I get on it hard and right at the top, top end. And I'm going, by then, I'm going probably like uh, 100 miles an hour, you know, whatever. So, I don't know what the deal was. Could be injectors. Hopefully not. Hoping to God that's not the issue because I got new fuel, new fuel pump in here. And uh, But one thing I'm thinking it could be is I need to gap the spark plug smaller because uh, I'm running the BKR9 EIX. But I didn't gap them because I think they came with a point zero a point zero two six gap but i think on these they want they some people are some people run them with like that and they're fine but uh i think these you might need to gap into point zero two four point zero two two i think it's point zero two four because i know mine came with the uh, ultra charger and i gotta look at the paperwork i think they tell you to gap them to like point zero two four so i think i'm gonna try that first and then I'll get back out here and uh, try to run some more times. I think my best uh, zero to 60 was uh, zero. I think it was, uh, what was it? Uh, best zero to 60 was what? 
I think it was a 2.91 second. When I did this run, y'all, the best was like a 2.84. And then my 60 foot was better than it ever been. My uh, one eighth was better, man. I I would have I would have broke my own record. So, but anyway, y'all, uh, I'm gonna get all this back together. You guys wish me luck, and then I'll be back out here trying to uh, set some uh, quarter mile times, break my record, and then I'll be back at it. But anyway, uh, y'all have a good one. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.